Howdy, this is Mr. Justice. Uh, today we're going to talk about the second part of photosynthesis, the Calvin cycle. Uh, we'll also get into how carbon dioxide enters into the plant tissue of leaves. We'll talk about uh, one of the most important enzymes on Earth, Rubisco. We'll talk about the reactants and products of the Calvin cycle. And then uh, during your independent practice, I'm going to ask that you guys investigate water of the Great Barrier Reef to see how pollutants and or sea temperatures are impacting photosynthesis in the area. And the instructions for that's going to be on Canvas. All right, so let's start off with this. How does the carbon dioxide enter into the leaf tissue? Take a look. We've got a nice cross section of a leaf and if you're looking at the diagram here, all of those little circles inside of those cells, those plant cells, represent chloroplasts. The yellow circles represent the nuclei, but look at the very bottom here. If you see the cross-section of those two guard cells, um, these guard cells will uh, form uh, the, the borders of a pore or a hole that carbon dioxide can enter into. These pores are called stomata, and the, the stomata, these holes in the bottom of the leaves, are guarded by these guard cells. These guard cells will either swell up with water and close or shrink when they have less water and when they shrink they open, uh, rather they, they close, uh, in not allowing carbon dioxide to enter into the leaf. When they're swollen, they're able to open up. Uh, water, you know, when water is present, photosynthesis can occur. So carbon dioxide is absolutely required. You know, plants are also going to lose water from the guard cells through these stomata as well. So if it's too hot, it would be important for uh, plant cells to close their stomata to decrease the amount of water that exits the leaf from them or through them. Uh, so take a look here. This is how uh, it looks, representation of it. So there are those swollen guard cells and when they're swollen, the hole is open. The pore is open, allowing carbon dioxide to enter water can leave. Now think about it also, oxygen gas is being produced during photosynthesis too. And so, so stomata is the location of where oxygen gas will exit the leaf. Um, when there's not a lot of water, these guard cells will shrink and close up that hole, uh, decreasing the amount of water that will exit, decreasing the amount of CO2 that will enter. And there can be some issues with that because uh, CO2 is an ingredient that's required by the Calvin cycle. Take a look here at this video. You can see uh, stomata opening and closing. Opening and closing. Pretty wild stuff, huh? Let's talk about the Calvin cycle. Uh, so the Calvin cycle here happens in the chloroplast, but where specifically in the chloroplast? If you recall, there are two major uh, locations inside the chloroplast, the thylakoids, which these membranes are the location of the light reactions, and then all of the other area that's not the thylakoids inside the chloroplast, it's called the stroma. It's made up of water, it's made up of dissolved ions and hydrogen protons. There's also going to be a lot of enzymes found within the stroma, and an enzyme is a class of molecule that can do work as long as there's energy present. So the energy present to, for these enzymes, like Rubisco, to do their job and make organic compounds, sugars, in the stroma of the photosynthesis process, this energy comes from ATP and NADPH produced during the light reactions. So we're going to talk about the Calvin cycle today. Now, a really good overview here of the process happens on this video here. Now, uh, when you're watching the, the video lecture uh, version of this today, and uh, I'm not going to play this for us here because uh, you, you'll be able to access it using that link on the right-hand side of your screen, crjust.us forward slash Calvin, and uh, you know, write it into your notes, and you can revisit and watch this video at any time. In the video, though, you're going to... Whoop, In the video, you're going to learn about some of the big picture stuff happening within the Calvin cycle. Remember, we're in the chloroplast. This process is happening in the stroma of the chloroplast. Uh, and here's the big picture items about what's going on. Carbon dioxide and the chemical energy stored in ATP and NADPH 
are used to manufacture glucose and the organic compounds used to build new plant cell walls and cells. Uh, the cycle here is named for the biochemist Melvin Calvin, who worked out the complex chemical reactions that we'll talk about in a moment. The Calvin cycle is facilitated or helped or catalyzed by an enzyme called Rubisco. And Rubisco is what it does, and we'll talk about it in a minute, but it fixes carbon dioxide, it attaches carbon dioxide uh, into organic compounds and really brings carbon dioxide, carbon, into the food web. Uh, it's, so it's a pretty important enzyme that does this. Uh, the Calvin cycle, when I was in high school, was called the dark reactions, which kind of implied that it could happen at night, right? If the light reactions occurs uh, during the sun, then the dark reactions occur when the sun's not up. And that can happen, absolutely, but it's not necessarily true because the Calvin cycle can happen when the sun is, is shining down. So a better name for the Calvin cycle then would be the light independent reactions because uh, what the, the, the processes here happen or occur independent of whether or not the sun is currently shining, right? As long as there is chemical energy in the form of ATP and NADPH available, then the Calvin cycle will move forward. You're gonna need some carbon dioxide too, obviously, right? Because, take a look. Here's the big picture of what's going on here. Pretty complex uh, uh, process, right? It's a cycle because as we produce our sugars that happen at the bottom of this diagram, uh, the molecules that go into it, like this RUBP, is regenerated so that it can be used again. So let's kind of start there. RUBP is a one, two, three, four, five carbon organic compound. Rubisco, this enzyme that is able to attach carbon into RUBP, does that. Uh, so take a look. This uh, purple sphere here it represents our carbon atom. Rubisco attaches or fixes carbon dioxide onto RUBP to make this slightly unstable six carbon organic compound. It splits in two two three carbon molecules called 3PGA. Now, you don't need to know the names of this 3PGA, but you do need to know that these molecules are modified by additional enzymes and energy produced during the light reaction. So there's that ATP going into and, and making an enzyme do its job, right? We're transforming 3PGA, we're adding electrons to it, energizing it, charging it to produce another organic compound called G3P, and it's that G3P, that three carbon molecule at the bottom of the screen that will be used by plants and other enzymes to produce uh, glucose, organic compounds like sucrose, uh, another type of sugar, uh, in addition to uh, cellulose, which is a type of uh, carbohydrate that is found within cell walls. So think about it, this G3P is not just uh, a chemical form that the plants can use to, to, to do their everyday job of living. In addition, this G3PA, G3P can also be used to manufacture new cells. So it's, it becomes the building materials that the cells use to make new versions of their cells. Pretty wild. Hey, so only one of these G3P molecules uh, will be used ultimately per one turn of the cycle will be used to create those organic compounds like sugars and uh, cellulose. The rest of them that are produced are recycled and modified by additional enzymes. A little extra energy here modifies these back into that RUBP five carbon sugar so that Rubisco can now add another carbon to it and the cycle goes on and on and on. And it's been doing this now for two billion years, which is crazy if you really start to think about it. So here's what you need to know from that diagram. Uh, this process, the Calvin cycle, occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast. Carbon dioxide entering in through stomata is fixed or attached by an enzyme called Rubisco to carbon-containing or, or organic compounds. This is that moment that Rubisco uh, allows carbon to enter into the food chain. If it didn't happen, if, if Rubisco wasn't doing this process, we wouldn't have any foods and life as we know it on Earth would not exist. Rubisco can be affected by temperatures, which you'll see in that case study that I alluded to earlier. 
uh, if it's too hot, this, this enzyme starts to denature. It starts to unfold a little bit. And when it does that, uh, since shape determines function, when it kind of gets unshaped or unfolded, it no longer has the same function. What was the function? It attaches carbon dioxide to organic compounds. So if it becomes affected, it doesn't work because it's too hot, it, the plant won't make sugars. Energy provided by uh, ATP and NADPH, remember that was produced during light reactions of photosynthesis, is used to manufacture those organic compounds, those sugars. That end product of Calvin cycle is that three carbon sugar, it's that G3P, right, that's used by plants to make uh, glucose, sugars, other organic compounds like cellulose that's used for new plant cell growth and cell walls. So this is what I'd like you guys to work on today. I want you to turn in your notes from today's lecture and I'd also like you to complete that photosynthesis case study on gizmos. Let me know if you have any questions.